So I've introduced introduced the idea that um, that work and energy um, are related, right? That um, energy is the ability to do work, and that work um, comes from force acting over a distance. Um, force parallel times delta x or force times delta x times cosine theta. Um, and in fact, um, our picture for that is that when we have an object with a force acting on it over some distance, right? So if the object moves, again, if that force acts and the object doesn't move, that force doesn't do any work on it. Let's say that force isn't big enough to overcome static friction. If the box doesn't move, the force is not doing any work. And that's not to say whoever is applying that force isn't expending energy, but that energy is not going into that box. It's going into, say, thermal energy um, as they uh, perspire to try to move this box. Right? So the point is the um, part of the force that, um, that points parallel to um, delta x, and in fact I could define here's my theta, that force parallel goes into increasing the energy of this box. Right? How much does it increase the energy of the box? I don't know. Let's let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can figure that out. So um, So let's start with that definition. Let's say work equals F delta X. And if I recall, force um, is mass times acceleration, right? So let's say uh, dynamics tells me force equals mass times acceleration. So I can replace um, F with MA. So let's do that. M times A times delta X. Ooh, but also I recall, let's use orange. I don't think I've ever used orange. Let's recall a kinematics equation. Do you remember V final squared equals V initial squared plus two A delta X? I want to draw your attention to the A delta X. Now I have an A delta X. Right? So what if I solved this kinematics equation for a delta x and plugged it in over there? So if I solved this for that, I would have um, v final squared over 2 minus v initial squared over 2 equals a delta x. So let's plug that in. Bear with me here. The payoff is, is pretty great. Um, okay, so plugging that in, I have mass times v final squared over 2 minus v initial squared over 2. Um, let's distribute the m. So I could do um, half m v final squared minus half m v initial squared. Now it looks like if I defined a quantity, if I defined a quantity that was, let's use another color, use purple. I like purple. So let's define k as half m v not no v squared. Then work leads to a change in that quantity. Do you see that? Then work is half m nope um, half m v final squared. So if I plug in a v final here. That will give me a k final, all right? So we'll say k final minus k initial, or sometimes we just call that delta k, right? Since um, since final minus initial for any quantity is something we call delta. This equation is called the um, work kinetic energy theorem. 
the work kinetic energy theorem. Um, <coughs> and that comes from this definition for kinetic energy. Right? Or really, we just derived kinetic energy from um, the definition of work. Right? Let me let me underline those things. From the definition of work, from Newton's second law, and from an equation that we got from kinematics. That's great. So now we have a, a mathematical expression for kinetic energy, right? We already said kinetic energy is the energy of motion. <coughs> Excuse me. So kinetic energy. It's the energy of motion. And it is um, half mv squared. Now look at this. The unit here is um, a kilogram times a meter per second squared, right? But if you group um, kilogram meter per second squared times a meter, um, the kilogram is a mass, the meter per second, second squared is an acceleration, and a mass times an acceleration, um, ma is force, that's a newton, right? So a Newton times a meter here, we've already defined that as a joule. So the unit for kinetic energy is a joule, just like we expected, right? If we're setting delta K equal to work, they need to have the same unit or um, what we're doing doesn't make any sense. Uh, okay, great, great. So when work is done on an object, it leads to a change in that object's kinetic energy, which we can now quantify. Fabulous. Let's do an example. So this is example number two. The example number two says a chunk of 250 gram wood starts a trip on a frictionless surface at 10 meters per second. It happens upon a two meter length of rough surface, which has a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.4. With what velocity does it exit this rough patch? Okay. So let me mention this. We could solve this problem. Oops. We could solve this problem using um, kinematics, as we have in the past, and dynamics, actually. Right. So what do I need? Um, when the block is in this in this region, there's a frictional force acting backward. It's a kinetic frictional force. Um, and I can figure out how big that kinetic frictional force is by um, drawing a free body diagram. In fact, I think we're going to want to do that anyway. So let's do that. Just quickly, here's x, here's y. Um, so this is the weight, this is the normal force, and this is kinetic friction. And there's no force forward, right? In fact, I expect the acceleration to be backwards because it's slowing down in this region. Um, so let's apply Newton's second law. Um, the sum of the forces in the y direction equals m times a y. a y is zero. So that gives me that um, the normal force minus weight equals zero, or that the normal force is mg. Um, we could calculate that quickly, um, but it's not super useful. I need the expression in a moment, so let's just hold on to that for a second. I could also apply Newton's second law in the x direction to get an x direction acceleration, but I, I don't want to. I don't want to go that direction. All right, because the other thing I can do here is the work kinetic energy theorem. Right? I could say I expect work to lead to a change in kinetic energy, which is going to be k final minus k initial. k initial is related to this v initial, this 10 meters per second. k final is related to um, this velocity, which I'm solving for. So if I could find k final, I could have my answer. But the thing that's going to be necessary is I need to calculate the work done. right? And to get the work, I need the, the force, which is the kinetic um, friction, times the distance, which is this um, 2 meters. Um, so that's where I'm headed, is, um, here, let me take this down here. That's where I'm headed, is 
the work kinetic energy theorem, um, where work is, oh come on, work is force parallel times a displacement equals k final minus k initial. And that force is the frictional force, which is why I'm doing the um, free body diagram over here. So frictional force, mm, this is kind of gross. Um, the kinetic friction times delta x equals half m v final squared minus half m v initial squared. Okay, again, I'm solving for v final. I know v initial. I know delta x, but I need the kinetic friction, and that's where this normal force is going to come in. Okay, okay, we are almost there. So the um, kinetic frictional force is the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. And we just solved the normal force is mg, so mu sub k times m times g. Um, plugging all that in to get that force, that's um, 0.4 times 0.25 kilograms times 9.8. 0.4 times 0.25 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. That should be something in newtons. Um, and what I get for that force... <coughs> is 0.98 newtons. That makes sense because 4 times 25 is a is a 1 with some zeros. So 0 0.98 newtons. Okay, that's my intermediate step. That goes right here. Um, let's make that come over here so it's not in the way. Beautiful. Okay. Okay, we're almost there. Now we just need to plug into the work kinetic energy theorem. Um, so 0 0.98 newtons times one point, no, it's uh, two meters, isn't it? Come on. Two meters equals half times 0.25 kilograms times V final squared. That's what I'm solving for. Minus half times 0.25 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. All right, can you follow that? So point or sorry, two times 0.98. Um, it's going to be pretty close to um, pretty close to two. Honestly, 1.99 or something. Um, add over this term, divide by the half and the 0.25. What I get when I do this math, because then I've got a square root. When I get when I do this math, is 9.2 meters per second. Okay. Okay, that's pretty great. Um, so we use the work kinetic energy theorem instead of dynamics and kinematics together. Um, but it makes sense because we got the work kinetic energy theorem by putting dynamics and kinematics together. So it's kind of just a shortcut, right? To use the idea of energy instead of just dynamics and kinematics. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out here was um, another way we can ask this question is, does the object make it through the rough patch? We could have followed this, right? Does that make sense? So it's possible that friction would have stopped this object. Maybe instead of two meters, it's 200 meters, right? Um, at some point, the box is going to stop. So um, we could have worked this problem um, again. And um, if we had gotten an imaginary number, if we'd gotten to a point where v final squared equals something negative, That would mean that um, getting through the entire patch actually costs more energy than the object started with. So if your calculator breaks right at that point, then um, you know that the block didn't make it all the way through. And what you'd probably solve for instead is how far does the object make it? In which case you would say v final is zero and delta x would be what you'd solve for. All right. Um, and that sort of problem shows up in other places, which we'll see in another example.